This is the story of J.W. Excel, born in Missouri, Cape Girardeau. He was adopted by Joanne and Ralph Ashcraft. He later found that he was capable of doing many different things, but wasn't sure how to get out there. He excels in art and has a talent in singing and voice work. He also has a talent in the goofiest things, finding the silliest things out of nonsense. So sit back and accept him for who he is, Osbergers and all. Enjoy this interview conducted by Roll the Boat in JW Accent, Osbergers and all. Not too long ago, Jay got me hooked on uh, doing videos with him. And, uh, so who is Jay? JW Accent, YouTuber. Very good guy. Very creative. Very intelligent with the camera. He showed me a lot of different aspects of what he's capable of, from the serious to the just the crazy out there type of films. So do you think that he is intelligent, or does he make the camera intelligent? He is intelligent. But does he ever make the camera intelligent? Of course. You see his editing. That just tells you right there in his editing that he knows what he's doing. But he doesn't actually take some brains out of his head and put it into the yeah, camera. That'd be kind of hard to do. I would never, I wouldn't put anything past Jay. It's kind of out there like that. How you doing, everybody? We're sitting here with uh, JW Accent. Hi, hey, YouTubers. So, Jay, how are you feeling today? Uh, All right. It's a nice day. <laughs> Classic Jay right there. I just got a couple questions for you, if it's all right with you. I'd like to ask you. Um, now you've mentioned before that uh, you have Asperger's, correct? Sure, yes, this is a uh, high functioning autism. Okay, what can you explain? What a just in general, what autism is? All right, normal autism and Asperger's. <coughs> there you go. All right. It's simple. If you want a deeper thing, um, you know, it, Asperger's is more controlled. With autism, um, they, they may be very smart, but it's harder to control and it's harder to relay um, the smarts that they have. And some are immobile and some have a dysfunction where they can only make sounds and not full-on words there's paper we didn't take off the arm full-on words and uh, you know like what I just did there I go from topic to topic you know and that's a part of you got be on your leg but it just went away I and mean, that's a part of having Asperger's it's a part of ADHD and, the, and it's a part of the whole autism spectrum is there's a window right there and I'm talking to row see two totally different things I could go from one subject to another Sometimes I can even stay on a subject so long that it just irritates the crud. I, I mean, I turned somebody against Star Wars. Because of that, somebody who loves Star Wars, all I talked about was Star Wars, and then it just turned them off. And suddenly they said, you know, you made me hate Star Wars. How do you do that? Only in the autism spectrum, people. All right. Now, I've noticed in a lot of uh, different the spectrum of autism, as you put it, um, sometimes OCD becomes a big factor in it. Do you see yourself as having some sort of OCD with certain subjects, or is it all the time, or or what? Yeah, I mean, bro, growing up, all I ever thought about was Star Wars, and you know, I'm a big fan of both Star Wars and Star Trek and science fiction in general. But at the time, I had a whole room. Picture this: my hand. And my other hand as a room widening up and all of that had Star Wars in it now I mean wall to wall you can go in there and you can this was in a basement it was a pretty big room about as big as this yard and there were toy after toy memorabilia after memorabilia 
and now it's not worth anything. I mean, until you wait about 50 years. 60 years for it, but I'll be way too old to actually sell it. And what do you, how long do you think is, that obsession lasted? Gosh. Is it was a short term obsession uh, or? No, it wasn't no short term. But uh, I was a teenager and went up to maybe my 20s, 21, about there, you know. Wow. And uh, 20, 29, you know, I'm still into it and I'm 29 right now. But I'm not into it like I was. That's, I want to say that the obsession of Star Wars stopped at maybe 25. Five, maybe 25 it was right in between 18 and 29 right in between somewhere there right and it, it was when I got older and realized you know I, I need to get some money I need to stop wasting money on this I, I'm gonna I have kids I have a wife you know I need to support them you know and different things like that and the thing is really um, you know that's why I'm stuck on Star Trek now, and that's what I talk about a lot of the time. That's what I watch because I'm tr I'm going to the Kokomo Con as Captain James Tiberius Kirk from oh, all the original okay. 66 Star Trek. Okay. But you know, uh, there's some day that I might walk in as the Emperor. You know, out of fifty eight. You know, and stuff like that. Let me back up a little bit. Okay. Um, at Just what be it, careful when you back up a bit. There's. A lot right there <laughs> when did your your parents kind of realize there was something a little different about you? Um, at what age did they did they have you tested to see there's something not uh, quote unquote normal? I hate to use that that word, there's but no such word as normal. But no, I understand. But as is in the general public, how everybody else sees it. You know, when did your parents kind of see that there was something different about you? At what age do you think it was? I don't know, like, when I was born, time to uh, go, excuse me, sorry, <laughs> blooper reel. Time went on when I was born, as usually time goes on when you're born, and you grow up. As you grow up, you find things about yourself, like... Oh, these legs are used for walking, this face is used for looking. And one of the things that my parents saw is that I was quite different when they sent me to school. And the test was that they put me in a room with a bunch of these kids, and apparently I didn't play with anyone. I didn't interact with anyone. I just played with blocks in the corner. But, you know, I look back at that now, and I realize maybe, just maybe, kids didn't want to play with me. You know, and that's just a maybe because I can't go back in time. Nobody can. All right. Obviously. All right. How did that make you feel? You I saw. I know how it made me feel. I was probably like maybe three when that happened. When they did the testing, maybe a right. little older. But you know, it was actually no, I wasn't three. But it was kindergarten age, though. Kindergarten right. age. I was in school when I was a teenager, and I could tell you, I was a very angry person. And people labeled me with uh, something called um, O uh, D. Uh, I'm trying to remember. O D. O D D. Opposition. Oppositional defiant disorder. Right. Is what it was. And you know, I was defiant. I was defiant against my teachers. Can you give us an example of? Something like that during <laughs> during your teenage years. Wow, there was one time they were doing and the silliest thing. There was this uh, teacher who never had a smile on her face. Her name was Mrs. Wolf. Mrs. Wolf. She had like a one tooth right there. No, not really, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, there was um, a weird thing she wanted to do. She wanted to teach everybody crochet, which kind of a silly thing to do in a group of kids especially when there's boys there too you know that's more of a, a girl group thing. right yeah I understand and I, I kind of liked it because it brought up my creativity but at the same time I just didn't like her because you know like like for instance if I brought up you know do you like the Bee Gees you know she would say well when I was younger well, you know if you like a group then you like a group you know it right. doesn't die out you know it was just she always wore dark clothes. She had dark hair. She was 
average build. She just she just wasn't a happy person, it seemed like. And so you could kind of feed off of that. Right. And when we were doing crochet class, one of the kids, he uh, was being a little unruly. I can't remember what he was saying, but he didn't really say anything that great. I stood up for him and I said, stop. I finally said stop because I finally had enough with this wolf woman. And I still can't stand her. I look at a picture in a yearbook and I can't stand her. And I, and I said, that's enough, you know? I said, let him go. I mean, you've been doing this for hours, yelling at him for nothing. And, uh, you know, I just got frustrated, picked up my crochet hook, and I threw it at her. She, she ducked, and this is the weird thing. I must have thrown it, I must have been so angry that that crochet hook lodged itself right into the blackboard. Oh, wow. And it stuck there. Having Asperger's or being a part of the autism. By the way, it's actually pronounced Asperger's. Asperger's. Not Asperger's. I, I apologize. <laughs> it's I apologize. okay, man. I apologize. I, I know. I've, I got used to get angry about having something different. I used to say, why are these boogers coming from my ass? And I don't <laughs> normally, I don't normally swear on my YouTube, but it's just to explain, you know, that, that that's what right. I used to say to joke about. My name. But go on, sorry. Um, is is uh, being uh, angry or anything like that? Is that a typical uh, behavior for somebody that has autism? I mean, are they usually typically angry? Uh, is it something that you can't control? I used to always think that, but. I don't know. As I started to get older, I started to realize, like, maybe it wasn't. Because, you know, there are different spectrums, like I talked about. Different, right. you know, it, it goes up and down different for different people. Different right. strokes, different folks. And that's the same for any disorder. No one person in the world is the same. Period. Don't, don't even lie to yourself and m try to make yourself believe that because nobody is the same All right rather you have down syndrome whether you're fat whether you're skinny whether you're a jock whether you're you're a cheerleader or whether you're just some tom dick and harry that lives on the street it don't matter who you are you are different from somebody else there is not one person who is the same and don't let anybody be let you believe that so when you say well with the Asperger's is a typical for someone to get angry, I I wouldn't say that all of them have gotten angry. I've known people with Aspergers who don't get angry. I I guess that maybe it depends on the whole situation, how they feel about their situation, how they feel about having Aspergers, and how they take the time to think about the situations that they have been through. And learn from those situations. I, I can see your point on on, on uh, the behavior, being angry and stuff. Do you think it intensifies it, or? I th oh, definitely. You know, it intensifies your feelings. It doesn't intensify like one feeling or another. Maybe in some cases it does intensify one feeling or another, but in most most cases it intensifies all feelings from what I've experienced and you know I've had friends who you know not only feelings but the things that they can do such as creative things or or anything else becomes blown out of proportion it, that person talks about the creativity that they have constantly usually sometimes you know and I'm, I'm quite different from this but sometimes it'll come out as being prideful proudful you know, constantly talking about, oh, I'm so good, look at me, you know, I, I can do this, this, and this, and I'm better than you, you know, and, and some, you know, and not everybody, I'm not saying that all Aspergers do that, because there are some very selfless, um, Aspergering, uh, Aspergering, uh, Asp <laughs> people with Aspergers, there you, go. you know, who, who actually differentiate greatly in that, in that area. <laughs> <laughs> if I can just get the words out. I've noticed you you really 
fidgety and um, does it does it uh, your your leg your foot's moving a lot yeah you're playing with your hands um, is it that's something that when you try to explain um, the the process of your thoughts is it is it that difficult for you does that make you kind of edgy trying to fidgety around trying to figure out how you want to say something or I mean is that just naturally is that naturally you you notice that your focus right here right now it's doing it my leg is bouncing all like, right come up on my face quit looking at my leg yeah okay you're oh, sexy though oh, I'm just saying oh, oh man no uh, no okay you can edit no. that later. you can edit that later <laughs> I don't think I will people need a little humor in their life well, get out of here fly. what are all these flies doing in here the whole fidget thing sometimes I don't even know I'm doing something in some of my videos you'll notice there, there's a couple of videos where my pinkies will act really weird when I do so and while I'm editing that and while I'm filming that I don't really notice that this is not fidget there's crap in my you know, <laughs> I have an itch and I must scratch it anywho you know and in real life that's kind of true you know um, only thing is I don't know that I must scratch it all the time I just do it because it's a reaction. I'll be sitting in church or school, and my leg will just start bouncing, but I won't know that it's bouncing until somebody says, hey, you know, you're rattling the floor. Right. You know, and stuff like that. But again, back to the whole hand movement thing, there's one where I'm with Johnny Socks in a video, and, uh, you know, we're doing, uh, you know, I'm your cable guy. Hello. I'm your cable guy! Uh, and all of a sudden I go, <laughs> and now all of a sudden my, my fingers start moving and I don't know. <laughs> well, I didn't know my finger was moving while well, that was recording. Right. I look back at it later, I'm like, Noel, my wife, Noel, Noel, come look at this. My finger is moving. And then in the other one where I, I'm talking about, uh, you know, Plog, this new episode series of Pizza Man that had come out and, that I've been doing. And, you know, to introduce him, there's one part where I'm doing this. Oh. Surprise guest on Jay's YouTube. Only I didn't know I was doing this. The, remember the <laughs> guy that I was talking about? Well, you're going to meet this guy. You know, I didn't know my fingers were twitching. I just thought I was doing this. I didn't even look and see my fingers were twitching. Finger dance. Happy hands club. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite. Now, you, you, mentioned, you mentioned your wife, Noelle. Yes. Um, is that something that you knew you were gonna do um did, did anybody that? did anybody ever tell you or and say you know what you'll never be married you'll never have a regular life i mean did anybody really impose that on you or and how did you feel about that well there's two things there's kind of two questions you you asked there. and um Has anybody imposed a certain life on me? Yes. Has anybody said that you'll never amount to a hill of beans? In a way. Because, you know, I'm the type who says, you know, I don't want to be a burger flipper. I don't want to be a janitor. I want to be a writer. I want to be a director. I want to make a movie. I want to do something creative. At least put art up somewhere. That's how I want to make my career. And everybody says, you know, well, you got to start at the bottom. I'm the type that says that. I don't want to start at the bottom. I want to be there now. You know, I, I'm the type of go-getter person who right. wants that now. Oh, absolutely. And in a way, like what you said, you know, has people in Yes. You know, when they say, well, for right now, you got to deal with life and you got to deal with reality. I don't want to deal with reality. Reality stinks. 
It surely does. There are people out there who can't get enough money for gas, who can't pay their taxes, who who are stuck in a place that they can't go. Life stinks and I don't want to I don't want to be the one to deal with it. I want to be the one who stands up and say, "Hey, life, come back." Does your wife support you in things that you do as far as your your filming, your writing? Oh, yeah. She's one of the, there are times that when she gets angry, she, she won't support me and she'll become a total dog about it. You know, I mean, I don't want to, I don't like the that word because it puts people, right. women down. But, you know, my wife's beautiful, you know, and she's a wonderful woman and I love her dearly. You know, I don't know, you know, I, I don't like what she's become when it comes to the weight issue and I don't like what it, be, what it has become with her mental state which is she just has totally changed but you know no matter what I'll love her unconditionally and that will never change and you know she'll always be my wife and and um, you know she has still it, it comes out in spurts wow. you know the whole arguments and stuff but everyone deals with issues with each other everyone has a different issue with each partner and you're always gonna have fights you're always gonna have issues because like I said before, Ro, everyone is different. Everyone, it, no one is the same. And my parents, <laughs> did they tell me I wasn't going to go anywhere? No, because they wanted to see me succeed. However, did they think I was going to make it? No, I was told later on after I got married that they were so shocked and so surprised that they thought that this woman was just going to be like every other woman where the woman would leave and you know that's what my experience with women has been in my life is that women hadn't stuck around long enough to marry me so that I could you know it's like getting a turkey putting it in there putting the juice over there letting it marinate they didn't stick around long enough for that relationship to marinate and then sizzle and become beautiful pride prize winning turkey Instead, right. the turkey leapt up and ran away. In, in that aspect, um, did you disclose your diagnosis? Disclosed. Di disclosed your diagnosis when you met these women. Um, did you disclose it to your wife when you guys got together? Disclose what? How that you have? Oh, they have Aspergers. They're Aspergers. And well, how she did was they? Great. When we dated, you know, um, I think it was maybe like maybe three days. I want to say three or four days after that. She was a real trooper. She went to the library, got book after book. She had stacks of books up to here about Asperger's and autism spectrums in general. So I was walking down the sidewalk. She's got these books. Let me help you with those. Asperger's? What? What are you doing? Are you? Are you? Are you spying on me? Huh? I threw the books at her. Oh. No, I didn't. No, <laughs> <laughs> no she. But no, she really would go to the library, get stacks of books about autism, about ADHD, about... She wanted to understand whatever. what you were all about. And, you know, let me, let me tell you something. I didn't always know that I had Asperger's. It started out with, with doctors saying that I had, thought I had ADHD. Then years after that, I thought I had ADHD. Well, years after that, ADD. Years after that, I was like, what am I? What? Which came first, the egg or the chicken? You know, I'm like, you know, I didn't say that, but you know, that's what I felt. You know, I felt like this this chicken being jerked around. Like, what what am I? Who am I? You know, I, no matter what, I want to tell you people out there, those of you who are confused, whether you're confused about being gay or straight, or or your ADHD or this or that, or if you want to be popular, if you want to be, or if you want to be just you know the loner, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, you you are going to be yourself. And I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Anywho. Anywho. Now I remember what I was going to say. No matter what, you're human. Okay, good okay? point. And I was going through a thing, a phase during that time where, you know, they're going through all these things. ODD, you know, um, even even the, oh, what is it? Like you have to wipe the doorknob so many times. OCD. OCD, like you brought up earlier. I wanted to finish this real quick, you know, before I forget my train of thought, like I do, <laughs> which is a big thing for me, um, I guess because I have so many thoughts in my head, um, is the thing is, 
you know, I, I, I was in a quandary where I was just wondering aimlessly, like, what am I? You know, I was confused. And like I said, you know, no matter what, people, you're human. I finally come to this nurse who says, you know, you have, you might have Asperger's and I'll treat you for free because I want to make sure you have Asperger's. And she gave me a list. You know, and I marked everything. Me and my mom looked at it together, and we marked everything. You know, with you know, with a pencil or a pen or whatever we were using at the time. You know, your your weapon of choice. You know. Anyway, and me and my mom decided. You know, I didn't have um, bipolar because we explained to her. You know, hey, I, you know, I, there would be one minute I'm angry, and then the next I'd be apologetic, and everybody else would be like, yeah, but you just blew up at me, you know, and right. I'd be like, what? I'm apologizing, what's wrong with you? And then I'll get mad again, because, you know, during the, so we explained that to her, and she said, well, you may have bipolar or Asperger's. Hmm. And so after that, you know, uh, some other doctor said, you may not have Asperger's syndrome. And I said, I want to stick with Asperger's. I don't want to go back and forth again like I did when I was young, until a point where I don't know who I am. I said, what am I? Finally, I said, what am I? And it took days for me to come out of it until I finally said to myself, you know, I'm human. I've seen a few of your films. Yeah, you've and been in a few of my I've films. I've been in a what few of your films. <laughs> I've been in a few of your films, too. Now, yeah, but what I've seen, you've ranged from... The total serious to just the wacky and insane. And I want to know, and I think everybody else wants to know, no, they don't. what goes on in your mind? Like, what kind of process are you thinking about when you come up with your videos? I was like, you know, what's your mind going through during these points? For the goofiness, there is no process. It's all ad lib. For the acting, there's a lot of degree of ad lib but there's more method going into it the things in my life what method acting is and it's a really good method that a lot of actors have used for a long time where you dig deep down to your soul and you bring out everything from the past whether it be a hurtful moment or the happiest moment in your life and you use the you use those moments to create the scene that you're creating and it works really well because it brings out those feelings, which I want to do with you later on, bro, when we do like a, a, a movie together. I'm going to try and help you guys. I'm going to try and, you know, lead you through method acting. We'll get into that. And, um, you know, that that's what makes a good film is, you know, yeah, the effects make a good film. But another point to it is that uh, good acting makes a good film too and you, I think method acting really directs that and when you say the process of thinking well you know and again when I do random and goofy things there hardly is any process unless I see an object and there is a joke to it I'm, that might be the process but if I'm just going to do something weird and random that makes absolutely no sense, which that is my humor, nonsensical humor, then that then that's the process. It's weird, nonsensical, it's stupid, and it makes no sense, and it makes you go, what the? And then it makes you go, <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's also like, what in the world is this kid on? Right, absolutely. You know, and that's the process. Well, I did, and I hate to keep coming back to your to autism, but does when you're making these films and you're trying to figure out what it is that you want to do and want to say, does that get in the way of you trying to figure out what you exactly want to do? Because you said earlier that your mind is just left and right and all over the place at times. Does you that know, make it difficult for you to figure out what exactly you want to film? I've never really thought of my random films such as you know where I do clips of me and I clip them into different sections I never thought about it this way before but that is actually a good example of autism right there because your brain bits are all over the place right your, brain bits, your thoughts your brain I can, bits I can right see them floating around <laughs> brain bits you know but you know I, since I was a kid my, my head feel, felt like 
if it was going to explode, I'd be like Chris Farley. You know, I'd be like, you know, you want my head to explode! You know? Enough! Do you want my head to explode? You know, that kind of mentality where you just feed me a bunch of junk, Lord, man. Why don't you give me a chance to just let it just sizzle and let the bacon cook, you know? Man, that, you know, I want to eat that bacon right now. I'm hungry. Uh, right. There's no bacon on my no. chest. So I can't eat it. No Here, what about eat. your your but, uh, serious side? When you're trying to actually... I, now, like I just said, now, I just recently saw one of your really good ones. You did. Um, it was the... What, what was Tall Tales? What was that one you just... Tall Tales? Was, uh, whatever he's... Uh, what that was a cartoon. About? Uh, the heartbeat. Okay. Which ones did I just see? Telltale Heart. George. Nervous. What happened? Now, I, I, I want to know. Talk to me about your crap. Because I got the best coffee. John, the night was fantastic. I didn't hurt through the night. I was fine. Right now, I am reading the papers. So let me have my quiet time, please. It increased my fury as the beating of a drum. Exactly. Tales. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, me too. I know. And I the do. The original story was by Edgar Allan Poe. Right. One of my favorite ones. It's probably one of the easiest ones you can understand from Edgar Allan Poe because this comes from a time when it's hard words, it's hard reading, you know. And unless you read deep into it, you know, he had some really good dark storylines. Yes, you know, he did. And, and like you were saying before in the one previous question, you know, does your mind go all over the place? when you do film it, my mind has always gone all over the place I want to do things different so many things that are different okay and when I do writing I don't stick with science fiction when I do writing I don't stick with horror when I do writing I don't stick with fantasy I like to do all three not a big fan of romance. I might be able to write it, but I, I, you know, I don't know if I could. You know, it's too inappropriate for my age. You know, and <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not adult enough to. Yeah. You know, get out of here, <laughs> my face. Jeez, fly. Anyways, where was I? Oh yes, the book writing thing. You know, I got a book out, and it's sort of a. Horror. Really? It's not horror. It's more psychological thriller. It's, Can you give us a title? It's, um, I forgot. Because it's been a while since I've actually talked about the, the book. Harnessed. It's about these two agents that go to the small town of Bedford, Indiana, in, in order to solve the bedtime murders and uh, to uh, get the bedtime killer you know, seen to justice. Only they find that the murders are connected to some sort of more paranormal thing. It's sort of an X-Files feel. You know, maybe a little more darker than X-Files, but I don't know if you can get more darker than X-Files when it comes to aliens and stuff. No, that's true. But, you know, it it, it is pretty dark, and, and uh, I'll just leave it to your imagination. I won't talk too much more. That's fair. They're not, it's not as bad as when I was young, because when I was young, I was like, I have, mom, I would say to my mom, I said, mom, I'd say to my mom, I'd say, mom, you know, I have so many, what would you say, what, what would you say, mom, (laughs) I have so many ideas, you know, what do I do, I want to get them published, I want to get them out there, and they were all over my head, you know, I had, I wanted to do a Star Wars book because I'd seen so many Star Wars books in the library. And I wrote a whole series that never got published because I found out that he has to find you. And he has to choose you to write it. And I got so depressed. 
Mm. But there was one time, you know, that I wanted to do parody, like Weird Al Yankovic. So I stood up on stage at my school, and I sang to, to an audience, uh, one of the parodies, you know, as long, as long as I'm hungry, parody is as long as you love me. By the Backstreet Boys. Out of all the places I've been there and none so fine, dreaming of burgers and pans. People say I'm crazy and that I am blind. It must be all of that spam. Now, me has <laughs> got me. Well, that's good. You know, I like that. when I did when I was in school, because me and a bunch of friends, you know, we got the joke. Because we didn't like Backstreet Boys. We didn't like it sick. We didn't like those boy bands. So a lot of the music that I would parody was off of boy bands like Hanson and different people <laughs> like that. And, you know, and. and Girls loved it too, though, because you know when I was up on stage and I did the as long as my I'm hungry, you could hear this big screaming thing like Elvis. You know, it's like <laughs> Elvis entered the building when I mentioned nice. Backstreet Boys. Nice. It's like, what the heck, man? You know, I'm wearing this dorky chef's hat and the dorky chef's uniform from my dad's naval days. <laughs> I come out and I'm doing this hand gesture. My hat about fall, falls off. You know, and I'm mimicking the old puppet routine that they used to yeah, do. Like, I remember that. Videos. And, uh, you know, and girls are like, ah! I'm like, this is not sexy. This is stupid. <laughs> oh, I want to get, uh, we'll wrap it up here in a minute. Oh, I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you, who's your inspirations for the stuff that you do? Who inspires you the most? You see, it started out. A long time ago, you know, where all I would listen to, the only music that I would listen to was Weird Al Yankovic. And so, he kind of became my inspiration because he's funny, he does his own music writing too, and he parodies. So that's funny, you know, that's a part of, sort of part of my humor. You know, is that I do parody some stuff, I get my own humor out and pull it out of my pants every once in a while, and then I do other stuff, and it's serious too. Um, you know, I want to do movies like he did UHF. He did a movie, you know. And I know it didn't make big bucks in the theater, but that's because people didn't like him at the time. Right. <laughs> people were ticked off at him. You know, and, you know, the thing is, he's not, he's not my inspiration so much anymore as there's, like, a lot of people who are my inspiration. But one in general, if you want to talk, like, YouTubing and doing some YouTubing on the YouTube. Right. With, with YouTube videos on on YouTube with a camera. What was that what was the name of the site again? YouTube. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, there's a really good guy I love. He's Brandon Hardesty. You know. And super rad, you know, he, he gets me going too. They, they give me these ideas, you know. When I started watching Super Ed videos, you know, he started out doing like four or five or even six or seven, I can't remember now, random videos. And once I started doing random videos, I almost couldn't stop. I got addicted to it. And started off doing jokes similar to his in his random videos. But then it just spun off to me wanting to do my own stuff. So I came up with, like, whatever I could think of. Such as, you know, I lit a candle. And I had my old kid's fire truck run into the candle. And I come running in with this spray. Well, the spray is Windex or something. It's, it's, I think it was weed killer. And I go up, it's okay, I'm a fireman. It's okay, I'm a fireman. You know, and I pointed at the flame. <laughs> I don't spray it, I, w I wish I should have, but you know, I, I was afraid it was going to, you know, look like the whole place on fire, so I didn't do it. But you know, it's that kind of humor, it's like, I'm not a fireman, what am I doing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know it started it started to spun off from Super Ed and then I saw Brandon Harsty who not only sung he did reenactments of film he he could act he could do it he could do drama he could do humor it didn't matter what he could do it he could change his face he could change his voice he was just that good and I was like I could do impressions and one day a long time ago I naturally did a voice and that was when I discovered that I could do Im impressions you know, like a lot of Star Wars impressions and stuff right. like that, and cartoon impressions. And with that, you know, I was like, one day I thought, well, why don't I just put it up on YouTube, put my impressions up? 
Why haven't I done that yet? Why is all the rum gone? Reveal yourself, tiny songstress. <laughs> I am Bonobus Kynes. When Brandon Harsty does his weird sounds and voices he can make, why don't I do my impressions, you know? And then I found another one who I really, really, really look up to, and her name is Brizzy Voices on YouTube. She can whip one out after another. One after another. Change your voice. One after another. And I can see her as someone who is going places. Me, I just don't see myself going places. I know people say I'm talented. I just don't see it, you know. If I were talented, I'd be going places, you know. And I know I found my niche, but it just doesn't seem to totally be working for me. I don't know what to do. But, you know, in the end, at least I found my niche. At least I'm human. Right. You know? At least I know I'm Asperger's and no doctor could tell me otherwise. Right. You know? So in the end, you know, I think it all works out. It just depends how you look at it. Now, you uh, recently introduced a new character to your films. I think you know who I'm talking about. Hey. Is it, uh, I think he's going by Row the Boat. I got gas! What, what really? <laughs> I swear there was water there! I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about him. Row the Boat, he's a jovial... He's an awesome, jovial, Hispanic dude <laughs> who is the coolest guy I could ever hang out with. He reminds me of my cousin, my cousins, my three cousins, Mark, Mike, and Matt, who work on cars. Who they love cars just like he does. You know, he loves to talk about like you know not only monster trucks, but he likes to talk about the muscle cars yeah, and so things like right. that. He loves them. You know, and, you know his favorite color is puce. No, <laughs> there was one time I saw Thanks. him, you know, in his backyard, he's walking around in this, you know, puce thong. I was like, hey, man, it doesn't work for you. It's not working for you, man. Put a, you know, he's like, well, maybe I should put some pants on. So he goes in, he puts some pants, he goes, that looks better. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, man, let's go make some videos. And he's nice. like, well, who are you? My name's JW Santa. I want to make videos with you, man. What's your name? Well, my name's Row the Boat. <laughs> no, that's not how it happened, man. But you know, his actual name is uh, what? What are you laughing at? Nothing. What's wrong? Nothing. Go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> his real name is Rodan. You know, off the big monster that uh, you know from uh, Godzilla. <laughs> you know, you remember the big beast in the yeah, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, it's like <laughs> you know, and stuff like that. So yeah, you know, Acosta. He, he accosted a lot of people, I'll tell you. <laughs> and, you know, he costed, costed a lot of damages in that one video he did. I, but, yeah, he's really awesome, man. If you ever see him walking down the street, say, Hey, row the boat, man. Give him a high five <laughs> or, you know, do bro fist. Or smack him in the face if you like. You know, I don't care. Nice. You know, nice. He, he's pretty awesome. I love the guy. Tell the people out there. Um, one last view about autism and who you are. Um, just kind of get uh, get yourself out there. G give me a give me a your serious point of view on on this whole situation. Sometimes you lose yourself, you know, and it's like that. You know, I know you said not to get silly. This is serious. But it's like that song, you know, Get Stupid. Black Eyed Peas, you know. Right. I think of that one where he's like, Get Stupid. Get Stupid. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> so, I think of it. It works well and I get stupid. It's the one thing that keeps me alive. The one thing that keeps me happy. The one thing... If I know I get a smile out of Row the Boat or Tom, Dick, or Harry down the street or Jane down the lane or even I knew Jane. Joe Walters, <laughs> whoever Joe Walters is, you know, and, and the Dickie Robertson idiot or whoever J Dickie Robertson idiot is, if I could get a smile of them, you know, or even, you know, my favorite face. What the? What am I watching? If I can get that worth it man yeah, and you know so get stupid no matter what you feel if you feel angry at the world 
If some girl has left you, and why are you getting too close to me, man? Get back up, man. You bad. You know, if some girl left you, if you're depressed, if you're in a quandary of being really depressed and down. <laughs> Camera on my face, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're feeling down, get stupid. Just get silly. Get random. You know? And forget the world. If the world's down on you. Be random and make the world laugh when they're getting you down. Got an itch up my nose. You see that. Scratching. Hey, thank you for being with us. I want to drop this. Remember, thank I just picked my nose. I like it. I'm going to save it for later. Thank you for... Uh, <laughs> 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 thank you for being with us. No. I appreciate you being really open with uh, no problem, man. being autistic. No, and, I am. You got a uh, problem with it? No, I don't have a problem with that. I kind of do have a problem with it, but uh, oh, it's all right. What you want? What? Switch hey. first. All right, well, um, uh, are we going to sign off? off was for me. Uh, absolutely. I know so you got to go. I got to get going, man. I'll see you later, it's Jerry. Been nice all knowing right. you. It's been nice knowing you. I better go see what's going on. Who's honking at me? What's going on over here? Yeah, can you get her? Will who's, be my daughter? Who's this, Jay? That is my dad. And? This is my mom. Hello. And this is my little girl. I'm Ro. I'm Ro. This is my little girl. Hi. Her name is Dana. Will She's two. Her? I have to go. Oh, my dad has to go. Hola. Whoa, she speaks Spanish. Very impressive. Oh. Muy bien. ¿En dónde aprendiste yes. español? Un poco. Un poco. <laughs> Adiós. Adiós. Mucho gusto. See you later. Hasta mañana. Hasta mañana. That's a... Uh, and you know, that's uh, uh, from a group. Yeah. How do you speak French? That's German. No. No, Swedish. Oh, Swedish. Oh, Swedish. Speaking of Swedish, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, um, manana. That's that's from uh, an old Swedish group called ABBA. <laughs> ABBA. So uh, bye bye. I'll see you YouTubers on the flip side. Remember to submit to uh, go out and mess around and have a party and eat and hang with friends and have a good old time no matter who you are you're human remember that and comment oh yeah look at this fat shit i love you Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. bye Remember your name when you're strange, you're strange.